Hey all here OS Reviews, a few days ago I was browsing on Amazon and I stumbled upon this, a small ebook reader priced around $25. I thought it was interesting so I picked it up. Also because we haven't checked out or reviewed an ebook reader in what seems like a very long time. Part of the reason I suspect is because smartphones are getting larger and larger, as well as tablets, Chromebooks, and a lot of these tools can do the same things, access digital books and content. So today we're taking a look at this because of its affordability, but I want to point out that it's a little bit misleading because though it's called the Pocket Reader, it's actually by a company called Slick, and they produce a lot of low-cost MP3 players, MP4 players that you'll probably see at stores such as Best Buy, Walmart, the like. Uh, it's actually not produced by Kobo, despite the branding on the top, as well as the naming in a lot of the titles of the selling pages. So this has nothing to do with Kobo, uh, which is an ebook store that also produces their own uh, ebook devices, but this is not one of them. First of all, the packaging is pretty simple. We just have the device right on top. It has this very interesting uh, cover art that says The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. This is actually included as a digital copy with the purchase of the Pocket Reader. You have to log into Kobo's website, register with a Slick, and they will give you your free copy that you can then save from a computer onto the device since it doesn't have any wireless capabilities like 3G, Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth. I think it's a better idea to think of this as a repurposed MP4 player like an iPod Touch that is uh, being marketed as an ebook reader since it's really just that. It's an audio device that you can store music on it as well as photos and movies. It has a touch screen, it has an LCD color screen, it's not an it's not an e-ink black and white panel. So there are pros to that in that you can also do other things, but the cons would be it's not quite as easy on your eyes if you are doing it only for ebook reading. Uh, you can see that it also supports Adobe PDFs if you want to view back some quick documents, include some free titles, uh, this is what the interface looks like, and it is very small at only 4.3 inches. It's about the size of a smaller smartphone um, as opposed to a full-size Kindle, which is around 7 inches or so. It has 2 gigs of built-in memory, which is supposedly sufficient for around 2,000 books. Uh, it's a micro SD card to expand on the memory, and it has a built-in speaker as well. First impressions would be that it's surprisingly hefty. It weighs more than you'd expect, and it has a pretty classy design for such a low price tag. The entire body of the unit is made out of a soft-touch rubber material, which makes it very grippy and easy to hold, and the front indeed has some aluminum and metal accents, so it does seem like something that would would cost closer to $100 or $200 than just uh, $25. There's a Pocket Reader logo on the very top, and on the top of the side, we also have access to the 3.5mm headphone jack, micro SD card slot for expanding the memory, mini USB for charging and syncing, and there's even a stylus slot. It's a telescopic stylus that physically extends for you to interact with the display if you don't want to use your fingers. So no, this is not using a capacitive screen. Again, evidence that they were cutting a kind of a few corners to make the cost lower. There's the mono speaker on the back and the slick branding as well, with two gigabytes proudly stamped onto the plastic. So if we turn the unit on just by tapping on the power switch for a few seconds, first of all, it takes about uh, two hours to completely charge. Um, afterwards, you can get roughly, I would say, a, a novel's worth of a battery life before the battery drains if you're looking at a novel with about 150, 200 pages or so. So the battery isn't super long lasting. You'll probably only get a days uh, of a continuous use out of it before you need to recharge it again. So that is one of the biggest downsides compared to a lot of Kindles, which has e-ink screens that are very energy efficient efficient and long-lasting. You can use it for months before sometimes you have to recharge it again. Here's the HTC Desire 612, which has a 4.7 inch screen compared to 4.3 inches, so you can see roughly the same dimensions as far as putting it into your pocket is concerned. It's a little bit thicker, but certainly not bad. The user interface here is actually fairly clean and easy to understand. We have your time and day information in the top right hand corner and a currently reading tab where you can just simply tap on to get back to the page that you left off on. Now the software on here is definitely a little bit sluggish. Maybe it's because of the slow processor, maybe it's because of the touchscreen, but the result is it takes a little bit longer to load your books than what you'd find on a more expensive ebook reader. However, it is functional. You have the name of the text on the top, it supports EPUB, it supports PDF without any issues, and because the screen size is a little bit small, one downside of course is you have to do a lot more scrolling and panning than on uh, you know a larger device. But you can use either kinetic scrolling using a swipe motion like this, or 
or you can just tap on one of the edges or sides to go left and right. Overall, it's still pretty easy to use, although I would have liked the presence of physical keys on the bezels just to make pressing it a little bit easier than tapping on a touchscreen. And you can also play music while you're reading a book, which is a pretty cool feature. You can tap on here to take a look at the table of contents. Uh, this all also, also allows me to add a bookmark, go to a specific page, change the text size, change the brightness, as well as exit this, and go back into the main home screen. Otherwise, we also have categories for our ebooks that's sorted by our favorites, which we can add manually. Our library, which if we tap on, we see a selection of um, content that has been preloaded as kind of demos. These are basically classic titles that we see as free ebooks on many other competitors to this. We saw it on the Literati ebook reader from a few years ago, for instance. Um, for example, we have The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn on here. We also have Al Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Dracula, Grimm's Fairy Tales, divided into two texts and Sherlock Holmes. Again, if you want to have the Hunger Games text, you have to first register an account and they will provide that for free as a download later on. So if I want to tap on a different text, for instance, it takes about the same time for it to completely load up and afterwards we have the exact same interface. Um, again, one of the benefits of a color screen though is we do have support for high-res images, which we can then view back uh, for you know covers of certain texts, um, as you can see here. Downsides of an LCD screen compared to e-ink would be it's harder to read outdoors, especially under direct sunlight. As you can see here, it still glares, despite the fact that they tried using a uh, matte surface as opposed to a glossy one like a piece of glass. On the other hand, it's easy to read in darker environments because it is backlit with decent viewing angles. In addition, there isn't a page refresh issue where you have to wait for it to blink once whenever you change the page. On here is a lot more seamless, just like you would find on a smartphone display. What I don't like about the UI though is it's a little inconsistent. There isn't a back key that takes you back into the main home screen once you're stuck into a book. Uh, so what you have to do to get back into this main menu is actually tap on the power key once. So for instance, if I go back into this main screen now and I want to go back, I have to tap on this to exit out of this completely. I've seen some reviewers say that there's no way to go back to this main screen without powering the device off completely. And although that isn't completely true, it certainly does show that the UI isn't as user friendly as it could have been. So that's the slick pocket reader. It's a very low-cost ebook reader that has a small size, about the same as a smartphone, that in the end I don't think is going to be a very recommended buy unless you don't have a smartphone, uh, you don't have a media player already, and the lack of uh, built-in wireless connectivity or official support by Kobo despite the branding is also a detriment. With that being said, if you are looking for an extremely low-cost ebook reader and you don't want to go with a slightly more premium alternative such as the Kindle, uh, I still do think that can provide you a much uh, better overall experience. I think that this would be an okay choice. Also, if you're giving it to a child, this might be something to quickly consider. So you can check out more details about this in the links down below, but for now, this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been the Slick Pocketbook Mini ebook reader.